Hey guys, Drifter here. Welcome to Ghost in Depth. In today's episode, we're going to be going over the Honey Badger Assault Rifle. That's one of the default unlocked assault rifles, and it's the one with the integrated or built-in silencer attachment. We're going to be talking about the integrated silencer and all of the stats of this weapon today. The gameplay that you're going to see is me using it with a variety of optical, iron sight, and undermount attachments. There's not going to be any barrel attachments because, well, it's already got the silencer built into it. And in my personal opinion, this is a very good assault rifle when used appropriately and in the right situations but that's not any situation and all of the time. There's a right way to use it and a wrong way to use it, and we're going to be going over both, but for now, let's jump right into the stats. This weapon will deal 42 damage in close quarters combat, and it'll maintain that 42 all the way up to about medium range, but then very quickly drop off to 20 damage, which makes it 3 shots to kill up close, 4 medium range, and 5 shots to kill at a distance. So it's going to take somewhere between 3 and 5 shots to kill your opponent. This one has a 1.4x headshot multiplier, like almost all the other assault rifles. That basically means if you get a headshot, that's going to be one less shot to kill as long as you're using the standard fire mode. The other ones we'll get to in a little bit. The three shot kill range of this assault rifle is 24 meters. That is the lowest range of all the other assault rifles. That one's really more comparable to the MTAR or maybe the MTAR with a muzzle break, which is not very good. Your, your optimal kill range is relatively close, but there are some other factors to consider, like the fact that it has the third best silence range and the best silence time to kill. So the Remington R5 and the AK-12 both have better ranges when silenced. Some of the other guns too, like the CZ-805 also has good range when silenced, but it's very similar to this one. But because this one shoots faster than all of those weapons, all those weapons shoot slower than the Honey Badger, it still maintains the one of the better ranged time to kill. So at longer ranges, your time to kill is going to be better with this weapon than almost any other assault rifle. So you've got some kind of trade-offs there which make it fair. And since we're talking about time to kill, I thought it would be appropriate to talk about rate of fire. It fires at 800 RPM that would make it the third fastest firing assault rifle the FAD fires pretty quickly at 882 and the ARX is about 160 RPM so this one's only a little bit behind those and it's usually at least 50 to 60 RPM ahead of all of the other assault rifles so it is one of the faster firing ARs when it comes to this weapon's recoil, I'm kind of in an awkward spot here because the recoil is statistically low. I'm looking at the bullet plots online, at the stats and how it should be performing, and it indicates to me that it had, should have fairly low recoil. However, in my hands when I use it, it feels more like moderate recoil and occasionally high recoil when I curse myself for missing the target so much. So again, bear in mind that statistically it should be low, but in my hands when I'm using it, it feels high. And there's a lot of other people that mention this too. They mention the kind of funny wobble to the gun, especially when using the iron sights. However, one interesting fact about it, it does have the highest center speed among all assault rifles. And it's got that by about, I don't know, 5, 10, 15% maybe. It's got a very high center speed, which makes it an excellent excellent candidate for burst fire and for single shot, which we're going to talk, be talking about later. But just keep that in mind that if you want to fire this in burst, either manually yourself with your finger or with those other attachments, it has a high center speed, so it'll come back to rest very quickly. Aim down sights time on this assault rifle is pretty normal for the class at 0.3 seconds or 300 milliseconds. Running quick draw will, of course, speed that up. Reload times actually on the swifter side of things here in the assault rifle class. Uh, your empty reload is 3.16 seconds. That's when you've burned all of your bullets. If you still have one in the chamber and you don't need to go through the chambering animation it's 2.63 seconds and if you want to reload cancel it's 1.53 seconds reload canceling is always a good thing I'm pretty much gonna say that in every episode so I'd recommend you do it my favorite method for reload canceling is just sprinting I don't do the YY thing magazine size for this weapon is very standard for the assault rifle class at 30 but if you're running extended mags it'll go all the way up to 45 and it does give you extra ammo capacity that's one of the things that I have a tendency to use a lot with this weapon is the extended mags because as we'll talk about later it is kind of a weaker weapon at range, and you will generally have the... Oh, it kills quickly, but the amount of damage is low. So you'll burn through your bullets pretty quickly, and I like having the extended mags and the extra ammo capacity. Let's talk about the built-in silencer and exactly what that does to the weapon. The silencer attachment on this weapon does decrease its range, but because it's kind of built in, you can't put a muzzle break and you can't put much on it that's going to increase the range, so it's just kind of like the weapon's default range, and it's similar to most of the other assault rifles when you put a silencer on it. 
Uh, as I mentioned before, the AK-12 and the Remington have longer ranges than this, but they shoot slower. Uh, this one has a better silence range than the majority of the assault rifles. A few will outperform it, but it's all, all in all very good. The built-in silencer will also keep you off the radar, which is a good thing. Firing when silenced will mean that you will not show up on the radar when you're shooting. So it's a good one to run with blind eye, which we'll be talking about later. Not blind eye, uh, off the grid, which we'll be talking about later. And because it's built in, you can go ahead and put a red dot sight and a grip on this, and you've got three attachments already. Or if you want to run the attachments perk, you could run red dot sight, grip, extended mag, because I don't have a built-in silencer and you've got four attachments. This is one of the few guns that you can go up to four attachments for the so those of you that are gun nuts, the equipment gurus, the guys that really like all the attachments, this one's a good choice because you can really, really stack those on. When it comes to the Honey Badger's iron sights, I will say that they are clean and usable. Again, not my favorite. I don't like a lot of the iron sights in this game, but the iron sights are clean enough for me to acquire targets at medium to long ranges, and as long as the gun doesn't kick up too much, as long as I don't move my sticks too much in the wrong direction, it generally stays on them enough for me to continually see the target and keep shooting. Occasionally it will kick up a bit, and the bottom part of the iron sights are blocky and it'll completely cover my target, which is a very scary thing and I don't like that to happen, but that does does occasionally happen. When it comes to my opinion on this assault rifle, I think that this is the best silenced assault rifle in the game. Now there are, are other assault rifles that are very good when you run a silencer, but this one is the best because it's got the built-in silencer attachment so I can use my other attachments on better things like extended mags or dot sights or shotgun undermounts or something like that. And looking at the stats for this assault rifle, it seems like it's built for medium range and stealth combat. Uh, by close range I would mean shotgun SMG territory, medium range would be mostly the ranges that you see me killing people with the weapon in this game, and long range is something more that you wouldn't want to go without a sniper rifle, LMG, or marksman. But inside of medium range, this is a very fast killing assault rifle that's stealthy by default, and it can be very good in the right hands. One of its key weaknesses is it does have ammo conservation problems due to having low damage at longer ranges, and generally speaking the recoil I have a terrible feel for, I have a tendency to waste my bullets, so when I don't run extended mags I have a tendency to burn through my ammo after about, I don't know, 3-4 kills. I'm usually dumping about a mag, a little bit less than a mag on a person, which is not a habit that I should have, but it is a habit that I do have and that's the problem that I run into on this weapon, so running fully loaded or scavenger would not be a bad idea at all. Now toward the end of the episode, I I've got three kind of interesting class builds for you. They're each one a little bit different and they're going to be using different parts of this weapon. Class number one, you want to run off the grid and stalker as two of your perks. The other ones you can choose, whatever, your tacticals, your lethals, your pistols, however you want it. Uh, I would also kind of recommend ready up and focus. I always run those two, but anyway, class one, off the grid, stalker, grip, and extended mags. The grip's going to decrease your recoil. Extended mags gives you lots and lots of ammo, so you can just spray, 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 and you've got a large capacity. Off the grid keeps you off of the radar, of course, and Stalker allows you to sidestep. This is more like the small map, the close quarters combat version of the Honey Badger. If you want to get up close and personal, if you like to rush, this is going to be the class of choice for you. You can aim down sights around the corner, hose them with relatively low recoil, still have at least 20-30 rounds left in your magazine and move on to the next person. It worked pretty good for me and I hope that it works well for you. Class number two is what I would call my ideal stealth class. When I really want us to run stealthy, this is what I'll run. I'll run off the grid, grid and incognito. Off the grid's going to keep me off the radar. Incognito gets rid of the yellowish name over my head. I had some problems on Xbox One earlier today when everybody was using the stupid thermal scope, so I ran in incognito and that messed that up. And I, incognito keeps me off most of the sort of scanning devices. Unfortunately, this makes me not have my speed perks, my focus, actually I think I still ran focus on this class, but not ready up or quick draw or any of these things. So I also ran the semi-automatic attachment, which increases the damage of the weapon considerably, makes it two shots to kill up close, and three at most any range as long as you're hitting chest and not knees, if you want to see that episode, I already made it. And the red dot attachment so that I can shoot accurately, and I was able to ding people pretty good with this setup, I didn't have a problem with it. Close quarters combat, I had some issues reacting fast enough, and I did a of course miss my stalker but when I use this in its optimal range which is medium and long it did work very very well for me and I had a good time the last attachment class that I'm going to recommend to you is kind of more uh, a normal one, kind of a try-hardy one. This is the one that you'll see most often on the internet, and there is a little bit of logic to it. I'll recommend off the grid, of course, because if you're running a silenced weapon, you might as well be trying to stay off the radar. Quick draw for fast reaction time up close, or, you know, from moderate range, pop around the box, around the corner, something like that. Red dot sight to be accurate. And I'm going to recommend, uh, oh, I wrote down FMJ here on the... Uh, 
on the text card. It's really the armor piercing rounds. Armor piercing rounds work like FMJ. They do not actually add damage to the gun, no matter what the little stat chart says. So people that like to run the honey badger and they like put FMJ on it, like, yeah, I'm going to cancel out that low damage. That's not what I'm going for here. What I'm going for here is this is what you'll use to chew through an enemy team that has a lot of ballistic vests. If you shoot them with the FMJ, well, my bad, the armor piercing, it completely ignores that. And if you're really a main assault rifle kind of guy, you probably go through the punching through walls kind of kills and that sort of thing. And this uh, FMJ, or my bad, armor piercing attachment will definitely help you do that in the red site. Well, dot site will help you track your targets. This is a class that I don't run a lot, but I do see a lot of people running it, and I think that you might enjoy it. Well guys, that's all for this episode of In-Depth. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope that you learned something useful. If you'd like to check out the previous episode of In-Depth that was on the MTAR X, you can click the box over there and it'll open a new window. The next episode is going to be on the AK-12. Whenever you want to watch that, click that box and that'll also open a new window. You can check it out anytime you want. Well, when it's live, of course. Today it's not live. And uh, the Ghost Ultimate Utility app is linked down there in the description. As always, if you enjoyed the content, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drifter out.